Hey, that chair is really loud. Hey, that means stop moving the chair, Parker. <laughs> Can I go, please? Holy shit, fuck testicles. Shut up. And now for something completely similar. Shut up. I don't like having to calm all you bitches down. This is officially Maxus Solma, a play for nine persons by Somerset Easter Day. Characters in order of their appearance. Do you want to play Domino somewhere else, maybe? Are Maxus Mark Solma, Dr. Tushar Haidu, Dr. Margaret Flanchard, Hector Manchester Mondelman, Esquire, Walter Tieni, Reginald Bigante, Clerk, Francis Cleft, and Bernard Baker. Your last words, patient Maxis. The room was empty except for one man in it laying on his back, dying of botulism. Thanks for the soup, suggested Dr. Haidu, a twiggy Indian who sat in the front. Mr. Dr. Haidu, yes? Please close your mouth. Sure, Mr. Solma. Maxis, or Mark Solma, was in the downtown hospital after eating a rancid can of SpaghettiOs. His doctors were Flanchard and Haidu. They were all in the room pretty much waiting for him to die. On occasion, he would turn over and vomit into a basin or groan or something. Dr. Haidu got up, although he were only four feet tall. We can get your stomach muscles to calm down more, Maxis. Mark turned to Haidu, looking sick. Flanchard did nothing but sat there. Maggie, if I don't die, I'm going to sue you for your life. So get up and at least act like you're trying to help me. Mr. Soma, you've discharged a third of your body weight. What can I do? Botulism is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the Donatal ES plug. What the fuck's that for? The, the nurse stood staring at the two doctors. So he can't process it? Maggie, if he's going to die, we can help with the pain. Then go to phenobarbital straight. That would make him sick. Fine, forget it. Put Donatal ES in him. He'll probably die now. I don't want more poison, Tushar. Mark was now screaming, and then the Donatal ES hit him, and he slobbered on himself. Flanchard turned to Haidu and asked, It's been two hours. Why is he still alive? Maybe miracle? Shut up! Thanks for the help. How's the Donatal, Mark? Less than a week later. This scene is with Mark, Tushar Haidu, Margaret Flanchard, with Mark's lawyer, H.M. Mondelman. All I can say is that someone's going to pay. For what? You're still alive! But he was in the hospital for over 24 hours, you nimrod. Don't get so excited. I'm here on the grace of God. No thanks to you, Maggie. I thought you were... Thought! Thought! It's all bullshit anyway, Dr. Flanchard, right? What are you talking about? Did my client suffer trauma? Yes. Did he suffer emotional slash retinal scars? Yes. No. Hmm? Retinal scars? You made that up. No, that's what you told me in the limo. What limo? So, Mr. <laughs> Solma, I did my best. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Laugh. It's good. Okay. So, Mr. Solma, I did my best to save you. You got me hooked on Donatal. It's not my responsibility. To distribute the meds to a blind and paralyzed man? I think so. Stop! Stop! I was never blind or paralyzed. Where are you getting this from? Probably his ass. Most lawyers... Hey, buddy. Do most lawyers know six different languages in karate? No. But neither do I. <laughs> he, cro <laughs> he crossed his arms pridefully. The conversation moves on. You know what? Fuck the hospital. Yes, fuck the hospital. I'm going straight for Ataxia Soup. There's a soup called Ataxia? No, I just read it off the wall because I can't remember the real name. It's Ansel Waxman. Right, straight for Ansel Adams. Waxman. Minus the end scene. <laughs> oh, we now bring our story to the representative's office of Ansel Waxman. The scene is with H.M. Mondelman, the lawyer, and Walter Tieni. Excuse me. Do I look very vacant? Yes, your eyes are hidden from the... What? My name is H.M. Mondelman, representing Mark Solma, one of your very unhappy customers. I'm Walter Tieni. Tiny? No, Tieni. It's French. And what you need to do is file a grievance for Mr. Bigante. Bigante, like picante. Isn't there a soup? Yes, the soup is named after him. Suddenly, Mondelman reaches over the counter and squeezes the desk clerk's neck. How about you get that fat-ass piece of shit down here so I don't have to get my suit dirty? He lets go. Okay, right now what I'm going to do is call the... Again! Holding the throat. Take me to Mr. Bigante. Fine, asshole. You big asshole. He chokes harder. Hey, Walter, how'd you like to tango? I wouldn't. Good, because if you said yes, I was going to drop you down the elevator chute. Close scene. <laughs> the next scene is set with Mondelman, the lawyer, Bigante, and Walter. This is H.M. Mondelman. He's a lawyer, and he just choked me. Good! Sounds like we'll get along just fine! The most enormous man H.M. has ever seen leans over, extending the biggest hand he's ever seen. Reggie Bigante, Bigante's beef picante, hotter than the witch's cooch, yeehaw! Oh my god, that's the grossest thing I've ever heard anyone say in my life. <laughs> Have you tried the soup? He was eating a bowl of it himself. 
He had spilled a lot of it on his papers in the telephone. He picked up a piece of gristle and spits it at some random hound dog in the corner of the office. The dog doesn't move. <laughs> well, it's a... <laughs> Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Bigante, although I'm appalled at your manners. What's that? You ought to build an escalator. Yeah, well, yes, Wally's been talking about one ever since the fire, but... Hector. That ain't got shit to do with fires. And it really doesn't, but... Listen, Tiny, it's Tiani. Take this fellow down to dinner, get him some something to eat. He looks like a rooster. Then you bring him back up so Uncle Boone can finish his supper, okay, boy? Of course, Uncle Boone. And the play's cut off. <clears throat> now, over some good period of time, Walter left Mondelman in the cafeteria line and returned in a new suit holding a cap. The whole office smelled like stew. No wonder with that repulsive blob running it. Does his phone work? What? He had a hot soup in the speaker of his phone. Does it still work? Oh, no. If he needs you, he just yells. And I do whatever he says. They stood in line, still not moving. Walter pet the cat and glanced at Mondelman's shoes. You like? Like what? My shoes. Why? You were staring at them. Oh, sorry. They're just nice shoes. Got a wife, Tiny? No, but she has me, he grinned. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> Very little, I wager. Okay, Wally, we're done here. I want to go back to Reggie's office. Close scene. At a stop and shop. Mark, Dr. Hydu, and a clerk. What is he saying? I can't understand. Give me the soup. The Mr. Reggie kind. What? There is no Reggie. You mean vegetable soup? No. Yes. No. Okay, you know what? I have better things to do than play games. Biggie Bigante's Beef Picante. Hot or mild? It does not matter. Just give us the fucking soup. Okay, now you've lost it. No. Now you can't have any of Mr. Bigante's soup. Why? Because he was rude to me. Give me the soup. No, you stinking asshole. I'll banish you. What? Who is this man? At that point, situation as it was, Mark hops the checking counter and punches the clerk and the clerk next to him in the face. He hands two shower can of beef soup, and they both leave. They would have been gone to Mark's house had it not been nearly burnt to ash and surrounded by firemen. Mark jumps out of Dr. Hydu's really expensive Jaguar. What the holy shitballs is going on here? <laughs> Hello, Mark. I'm Francis Cleft. How does this make you feel? What? Who the hell are you and what happened to my house? I'm Francis Cleft. I insured your house. I'm also a Peace Talks advocate at the Sunday Liturgy in Rosewood. We claim New Baptist Christian Octavian. Hey, Francis, what happened to my house? Look to the skies. He looks up and sees an irrigation plane soar by. Okay. One of those chose you, our house to land in. Our house? It's my house. Are you saying a plane crashed into it? Enter Tushar. Then no shit, Maxis. There was clamor and high anxiety level. The house burnt like a brick. I mean stick! And all that was left to Maxis Solma was his friend Tushar and his insurance agent, or evangelist. If he couldn't sue Ansel Waxman, he'd be on the street. But Francis said the good Lord told him to take in the fire child, to shelter and bathe him accordingly in goat's milk. For ye who follows the path of truth seeks the steps of gold in Jesus Christ and holy shit unseen. <laughs> I love that part. Uh, New Baptist Octavian, whatever that means. Hey, hey, what? Shut up. Next scene at Ansel Waxman with the lawyer, Walter Tini, and Mr. Bigante. My client bought a can of your soup. Well, good. Let him finish, Reg. Tini, you shut your tiny hole, see? Then he contracted a deadly virus called botulism. He went to the hospital and suffered from severe GI trauma. Like general infantry? No, Mr. Bigante, like gastrointestinal. Well, hell, I don't know what that is. Poo shit, your rectum colon. Jesus, Walter! You trying to make me vomit, for Christ's sake? So my firm is asking you to give us $2.5 million and pay for Dr. Haidu's medical bills. I'm not a charitable man, Hector. Good, because this is a lawsuit. We'll let the law decide who gets what. Now, wait a cotton picking. I don't like those comments. We're in Wisconsin, not Baton Rouge, so stop using them. Tiani just sat there speechless. He could lose his job, seeing as it was him and Bernard Baker who oversaw packaging and scene. At Francis Cleft's home, Francis Cleft, Mark, and the lawyer. 2.5? You dick, that's nothing. We'll raise it gradually. We'll gradual nothing. My house just burnt down. Francis enters with a plate of sand dollars. Hungry, Mr. Mondelin? No, I don't eat shells. Oh, my goodness. These are sand dollars. Uh, yes, they are. I'm sorry. Let me fix that. Well, I've got them to pay Tushar. Big deal. I was going to get paid either way. Dr. Haidu, you saved my life. You will share in the fortune. Kalu <laughs> kale. And enter Francis. Here, try these ginger snaps. Tushar eats one. This is just a darker seashell. Are you a crazy, you stinky piece of shit? End scene. At Ansel Waxman. <laughs> the, following, the following scene is with Bernard Baker, Walter Tierney, Mr. Bigante, H.M. Mondelman, and Dr. Haidu. And one can of soup.
Are you Mr. Baker? Yes. Do you ever see the packaging of this? And he holds out the soup. Mr. Baker, does anything ever sneak through the lid when you do this? What, like elves? <laughs> no, like bacteria. Who would bring it in, gnomes? No, Mr. Baker, it's microscopic and floats freely in the atmosphere. What is the point? The point is, my patient got botulism and almost died from it. So what? He contracted it from your half-labeled can of soup, just like the one I bought in the store yesterday and is now emitting poisonous fumes on Mr. Brigante's desk. Brigante grabs the soup and smashes it through the window. How do you know I, you, how do I know you didn't cut that after you bought it? How do we know to trust you when even Mr. Brigante in horrified terror disposes of the can that you, Bernard, assured us was safe mushroom and soup? I'd like to point out that early on in the story when they bought it, it was beef soup. <laughs> um, this is a bunch of shit. Getting caught or feces? Shut up! No, I think you will shut up! And then Hector goes over and punches him in the face, but Baker stops him. Well, what's the big man have to say? We're going to jail, boy. We got no case. The only reason I ate that shit's because I was born immune to both the Jardia protozoan and botulism. <laughs> I eat it and I'm fine. Then the moment of truth has come. After all these years, Walter must know who he is. Walter, you are a robot slave of mine, operated with the Tyco remote control locked in my desk. <laughs> Reginald, please. And then Walter Tieni is turned off. <laughs> Everyone stands bewildered except the lawyer. I want $200 million since I know you flew a kamikaze into my client's house. I want Tushar Haidu to receive full restitution to his jaguar. But no damage was done to the jaguar. When I am addressing you, I will spit this way and that, you louse. Hey, I'm not a louse. It's okay, Mr. Baker. You really kind of are. I want Ansel Waxman. <laughs> He's dead. Then resurrect him. I want him flogged with my son's frisbee, Old Blue Jay, 50 times and then laid in his grave. And all the soup with the face of Reggie Bigante on it. I want stockpiled in a storage unit I have reserved for both Mr. Bigante's personal use and U.S. military biochemical warfare resource. And I would like a brand new pair of roller skates, okay? Sounds terrible, but whatever. Final scene. Francis Cleft, Maxis, H.M., Mondelman, and Tushar at Francis Cleft's house. Dear Maxis, I'm right here, Mr. Cleft. Go ahead, close your eyes. On this sacred day of solace, Hector Manchester Mondelman has awarded you $200 million, a new home. And I want to celebrate with this delicious dinner I've prepared. You can open your eyes. And as they do, they find a labyrinth of Mika, Hornblende, and Quartz on the table, <laughs> with a nude statue of Francis Cleft rotating on the Lazy Susan centerpiece. These are rocks, you heathen of trickery! He throws one and leaves the house. Everybody else watches the statue spin till they are dizzy and fall asleep. The end. <laughs> <laughs>